اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ السلاۃ والسلام علی رسول اللہ الکریم و علیہ وصحاب اجمعین میں بعد رب شرحلی صدری و یسر علی عمری واہل الغدم بلسانی یفقہ قولی او مائی لارڈ expand my chest with assurance make my task easy and untie the knot in my tongue so they understand my speech rabbi zidni ilma wa la increase me in knowledge allahumma anfa'na bima 'allamtana wa 'allimna ma yanfa'una wa rizqna ilma wa zidna ilma amin ya rabbal alamin o allah grant us benefit in what you have taught us and teach us useful knowledge and provide us with knowledge and increase us in knowledge ameen ya rabbal alamin i hope you're all doing well let's share the screen bismillah right okay let's start our class um i'm just trying to yeah all right bismillah arrahman arrahim rabbi najjini min alqawm azzalimin my lord deliver me from the unjust from these unjust people rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khairin faqir my lord indeed i am for whatever you could send down to me in need رَبِّ اشْرَحْ لِي صَدْرِي وَيَسِّرْ لِي أَمْرِي وَاحْلُلْ عُقْدَةً مِّن لِّسَانِي يَفْقَهُوا قَوْلِي مَاي لَوْرْد اِكْسْبَنْدْ فَرْ مِي مَاي بْرِيسْتْ وِذْ أَشُورَنْس إِنْ إِيز فَرْ مِي مَاي تَاسْكْ إِنْ أَنْتَاي دَ نَوْتْ إِنْ مَاي تَنْغْ سَوْ دِي دِي أَنْ سَوْ دَتْ مَاي أَنْدَرْسْتَنْ مَاي سْبِيچْ إِنِّي عُزْتُ بِرَبِّي وَرَبِّكُمْ مِنْ كُلِّ مُتَكَبِّرٍ لَا يُؤْمِنُ بِيَوْمِ الْحِسَابِ آي إِنْدِيد آي هَاف سَوْت رِفْيُوجْ إِنْ مَاي لَوْرْد إِنْ يَوْرْ لَوْرْد فَرْم إِفْرِي إِرْغَنْت one who does not believe in the day of a'uz billahi an akuna min al-jahilin i seek refuge in allah from being among the ignorant rabbi inni zalamtu nafsi faghfirli my lord indeed i have wronged myself so forgive me rabbana sirf anna azab jahannam inna jah azabaha kana warama o oh, our lord avert from us the torment of hell verily its torment is permanent evil indeed it is an abode and as a place to rest rabbana hab lana min azwajina wa zurriyyatina qurrata ayun wa ja'alna lil muttaqina imama o our lord bestow on us from our spouses and offsprings the coolness of our eyes and make us leaders of muttaqin so inshallah we will start with our seerah so i hope you um, all all of you have uh, listened to the link i sent to you on waraqa ibn nawfal so um now inshallah we'll start um i i hope you have uh, listened to it it's a beautiful uh, introduction and it tells us a lot about our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so as we learn um um of course as we go in sira and we learn about the people around rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, the ones who loved him the ones who were who recognized his uh, the truth of islam and his message um we will it will tell us how amazing these people were but it will also highlight the personality of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam how amazing he was so inshallah right so now last week we did that that he went and um, rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam went to baraka and he recognized that he was the, the messenger of allah subhanahu wa taala and then we covered surah al mudaththir uh, where we talked a little bit about uh, walid ibn mughira as well who was the arch enemy of uh, rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and also he was the father of uh, khalid ibn walid who will become <clears throat> the saifullah the sword of allah later in islam so now the mission begins muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam accepted his duties as prophet and messenger with resolute obedience he answered his lord's call by inviting members of his household to worship allah in keeping with his commandments they were to be muslim 
those who had surrendered to Allah and their religion was Islam. So what does Muslim mean? Inshallah, we will actually be studying the self and we will all we will learn about these patterns of um, words. But uh, Muslim at the moment, just remember, it means to submit your will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who submits his will to Allah is Muslim and then who one who enters it becomes uh, like the re religion is Islam. Of course, Islam also comes from the root word sin lam meme, which also means salam, which means peace as well. But Islam basically means full submission. The religion of peace, the religion of full submission. However, the Prophet ﷺ's compatriots were a rough people, accustomed to settling their dispute with sword. They clung to idol worship because it had been the practice of their ancestors who had strayed far from the pure monotheism of Ibrahim salam and Ismail salam. Sensing their antagonism, the Prophet ﷺ began to quietly teach those closest to him, those who ha whose hearts he felt uh, would be open to the truth. So in the beginning, very early phases of Islam, Rasulullah was uh, instructed to warn people, but those who were close people, those who were close around him, and he was, um, and and he lived in a society who were, they were, who were very harsh. They were people who were very harsh, and they were, like mentioned here, they liked to settle their disputes with swords, they, they did not want to leave idol worship. They had forgotten about monotheism. Monotheism means following one God, following Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Monotheistic religions are which religions? Islam, Judaism, Christianity. So basically all of them, they teach to, to uh, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All right. So... Um, so what happens is that now because of this, uh, he quietly starts his dawa, his uh, preaching, um, and it's called it's called the quiet phase of Islam. It's the beginning. It's quiet. It's not secret, but it is quiet. And Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is not inviting everyone to Islam at this point. All right. So who are the first believers? Who are the ones who are so lucky? We know uh, Khadija uh, Allah anha. Our mother was the first person to believe her husband and had been chosen um, because she knew that her husband has been chosen as Allah's messenger and prophet. As his wife, she knew more than anyone else um, did that Muhammad was no ordinary man. His sublime character and innate morality set him apart from those he lived among. She had heard talk about Allah's final prophet who was yet to appear. She had also heard about some of the strange and miraculous events that others had witnessed concerning Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you listen and if you remember uh, the, the lecture on Khadija radiallahu anha, uh, remember when she was young, she saw that the, um, I think she saw the sun has landed in her lap. So, uh, and Baraka, who was the interpreter, uh, he told her, that this is, it means that you'll marry a prophet. And also, um, what else? Um, she, Maisara, who was, uh, who accompanied Rasulullah on the journey, also saw some miracles, which he, he came and mentioned to Khadija Radiyallah. So Khadija Radiyallah, uh, one of the reasons she was a very wise woman, smart woman, and she loved the honesty of Prophet Sallallahu and she married him for, their, for all those reasons. He knew Rasulullah Sallallahu was a very special person. So, um, so, and then furthermore, she had heard Waraka say that the angel who had come to the cave of Hira was none other than Jibreel Alayhi Salam, and that this angel had brought Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a revelation from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Lastly, she was present at the moment Surah al mudattir was revealed. It was therefore only natural that she was the first to believe in Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his appointment as Allah's final messenger. So Khadija, Khadija, Khadija radiallahu anha has a very special place in Islam. She is the first Muslim after Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi because he is uh, the prophet of Allah subhanahu wa taala. And then she she accepts the message of Islam as she sees Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi um, and as he tells her about it. All right. So very, very special position. The first person, first woman 
but also the first person to enter into Islam is our mother Khadija radiyallahu anha. Uh, may Allah raise her ranks. Abu, Abu Bakr radiyallahu anha was also among the first people to become Muslim. He was a very close friend of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the time of Jahiliya as well, before Islam. When the verses of Al-Mudassir were revealed, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went to Abu Bakr, who was a leading Makkan trader and a prominent figure in his own right, and told him what had happened. Two years younger than Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, remember that he was thoroughly familiar with his friend's character and the reputation he enjoyed in the community for truthfulness. Abu Bakr did not doubt Rasulullah's declaration of, of his prophethood, just as he did not refuse his invitation to Islam. With his declaration of faith, he became one of the first Muslims. Again, what an honor. Abu Bakr as Siddiq, he's called as Siddiq because the verifier of the truth, because Abu Bakr, uh, when he heard the message, he immediately accepted because he knew that Rasulullah was known for his honesty and his truthfulness. Ali ibn Abu Talib was only a child when the Prophet's mission began. And some sources indicate that he was 10 years old when he became a Muslim. He was living under the Prophet's guardianship uh, since his fr uh, father Abu Talib was unable to provide for all the children. Muhammad وسلم, was like a second father to the boy who believed without a doubt that his guardian was indeed a prophet and that he had brought the truth. So again, Ali ibn Talib, Abu Talib, uh, uh, anhu, a mighty um, a friend and companion of Rasulullah grew up in his household, raised, uh, was, um, raised amongst his children and of course married Fatima. Uh, um, so he as a child accepted Islam as well, uh, one of the earliest Muslims. Among the first to accept the faith was also Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's freedman, Zaid bin Tiharasa bin Tisharabil Kalbi. Sold into slavery in the, in, in the pre-Islamic era, Zaid had refused to leave Rasulullah Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, when his uh, relatives tried to buy his freedom. Beautiful story of Zaid as well. For a while, he was known as Zaid bin, bin Muhammad, Zaid bin Muhammad, but following the prohibition of giving adopted children their names of their foster parents, he was referred to uh, by his actual name as mentioned above. So when Zaid was young, he was sold into slavery and he was the slave of Khadija radiallahu and she gifted him to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when she married him. Zaid, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, loved Zaid, he treated Zaid like his own son and he loved him so much and Zaid loved him so much. He, you know, the character of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam again, that Zaid, uh, when, when his fa family actually realized because he was stolen and sold into slavery, that he was in Makkah, they came to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his father, and they asked him, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to say, give their child back to them. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam immediately said to Zaid, you can go. But Zaid refused to go with his father. Can you imagine that? And he wanted to stay with Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Rasulullah at that point adopted him as his own son. And in those times, if you adopted someone as your son, you would give them your name. And he was called Zaid bin Muhammad for a long time. But in Medina, the ayat came in Surah Al-Ahzab, where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has forbidden people who adopt uh, someone to give their them their own name, they should, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that they should be called by their father's name. And that's why he's called Zaid bin Arisa. Okay. Again, we will actually cover Zaid. Again, amazing story of Zaid bin Harisa. Inshallah. These four, Abu Bakr, Ali, and Zaid, Radi, uh, Khadija, Abu Bakr, Ali, and uh, Zaid, Radi Allah, and whom accepted Islam the same day the opening verses of Surah Al-Mudassir were revealed. Some sources hold that they accepted Islam in the same order as given above. We don't know exactly, but that's what is said. Life changed for the new Muslims who desired to reform the religious practice of their families and friends. After his conversion, Abu Bakr began to encourage others to abandon idol worship and follow Allah's message. A well-respected merchant known for his generosity and intelligence Abu Bakr was the foremost authority on Arab genealogy. So the Arabs in those times had this knowledge, which was called um, the knowledge of Nasab or genealogy. So they, for them, it was really important to know who was the son of who. 
So that's why we know. Remember, we learned Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib ibn Hashim. So that's called the genealogy. So, uh, so Abu Bakr was, um, and it was a science. It was a, it was a subject in its own, and it still is in Arab. Um, so they would know the, their ancestors for far back. They even knew the ancestors of their horses. So the genealogy of their horses. So Abu Bakr was uh, an expert in genealogy. He was a very bright man. He remembered them by heart. He knew who was the son of who was the grandson, the great grandson, it's a great, great, great grandson. So he, he, he knew not only the Quraysh, he knew about other tribes as well. So he was very, very intelligent. His reputation and his character ensured that people gravitated towards him. And if he deemed person, a person was sincere in finding the truth, he would talk to them about his new faith. Again, look at the character of Abu, Abu Bakr as well. He was known for his intelligence, generosity, and his honesty as well. Rasulullah's best friend. You know, so our Prophet said that a man is on the religion of his friend. Uh, it's the gist of the hadith I'm giving you. So Rasulullah had someone as a friend who was also a very honest man and people loved Abu Bakr. So when Abu Bakr thought that someone's heart was soft, he would go to him and invite him to Islam. And he converted many people. Many people were interested in what he told them about Islam and they went with him to the Prophet Among those who became Muslim in this way were Usman bin Affan Umuvi. Again, uh, very mighty messenger of, uh, uh, I'm sorry, may, uh, very mighty companion of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Zubair bin Alawam, Asadi, Abu Abdul Rahman bin Auf Zuhri, Saad bin Abi Waqaz Zuhri, and Talha bin Ubaidullah Taimi. So Zuhri and Taimi and, you know, Asadi, these are all the tribes and their names are like, this is their father, their name and then their father's name. So these are all actually, all these names which I'm mentioning it to, it to you, Usman bin Affan, Zubair bin Awam, Abdurrahman bin Auf, Saad bin Abi Waqas, and Talha bin Ubaidullah. Rem remember them and memorize them because these are also the names of the 10 promised paradise. So there are 10 people who were promised paradise, Ashr al-Mubashara. And these are one of some of the 10, Usman, so Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, Ali radiallahu anhu, all of them. And then um, Usman bin Affan, Zubair bin Awam, Abdurrahman bin Auf, Saad bin Abi Waqas, and Talha bin Ubaidullah uh, radiallahu anhu. Um, they are all um, the promised paradise. So, okay, so remem remember and memorize their names. Many others from Quraysh later became Muslims. Abu Ubeda Amir ibn Jarrah. Again, he is also, remember, um, he is one of the promised paradise as well. So Abu Ubaidah, we will actually uh, write down their names so you know. And then there are others, Abu Salama bin Abdul Asad and his wife, Umm Salama, Arqam bin Abil Arqam, again, a very um, amazing person. Usman bin Madaun and his brothers, Qadami bin Madaun and Abdullah bin Madaun, Ubaidah, Ubaidah bin Harith bin uh, Mutalib bin Abdumanaf, Saeed bin Zaid bin Amr bin Nufail and his wife, Fatima bin Al-Khattab. She is the sister of Umar, Umar bin Al-Khattab. Uh, Khabbab bin Al-Arad, Jafar bin Abi Talib and his wife, Asma bin Umais, Khalid bin Saeed bin As um, and his wife, Amina uh, uh, bin Khalab, his brother, Amr bin, uh, Amr bin Saeed bin As, uh, Hatib bin Harith and his wife, Fatima bin Mujallil and his brother, Khattab bin uh, Haris, his wife, Fakiha bin Yasir, and other brother, Muammar bin Haris, Mutalib bin Azhar, and his wife, Ramla bin Abi Auf, and Naim bin Abdullah bin Naham. These are, um, of course, many names. Uh, there will be some names which will come later. Um, Arqam bin Al-Arqam, uh, uh, his name comes uh, because uh, he gave his a house to Rasulullah where he used to gather. Arqam, uh, and it was called Darul Arqam, where um, the earliest gatherings of the Muslim used to happen quietly, and, and, and nobody knew about it, all right? 
Um, and then, of course, Saeed ibn Zaid is also one of the promised paradise. So we will learn about these people eventually, inshallah. You don't have to memorize all of them, but the 10 promised paradise, definitely uh, memorize them. We will write them as well. More believers came from other tribes to embrace Islam. Abdullah bin Masood, uh, Abdullah bin Masood you have to remember his name. He is, he is um, one, uh, one of the people whom actually Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to tell, uh, recite Quran as, as it used to come. As it used to come to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam revealed by Jibreel Alayhi Salaam, uh, uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to recite it to Abdullah ibn Masood. And he said about Abdullah ibn Masood that anyone who wants to hear the Quran fresh when it came as a wahi, you need to listen to Abdullah ibn Masood, very mighty companion of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right, Masood bin Rabia, uh, uh, Abdullah bin Jahash and his brother uh, Abu Ahad bin Jahash, uh, Suhaib bin Sinan Rumi, Suhaib al Rumi as well, a very uh, big name, Yasir Ansi and his parents, Yasir and Sumaya. Sorry, Ammar bin Yasir. Ammar bin Yasir is also a very famous name. And uh, Yasir and Sumaya are the first martyrs of Islam, and Amar bin Fuhera. Okay, Umm Ayman, Baraka Umm Ayman, you have already uh, you have already covered. We already covered her. So she was the Abyssinian slave who had looked after Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during his childhood. Also became Muslim, and as did Umm Al Fadl, Lababatul, Kubra bint Harisa, Hilalia, and Asma bint Abu Bakr as Siddiq, the daughter of Abu Bakr as Siddiq, Asma. Uh, so these are the ones who embraced Islam in early days of Islam and are called earliest believers as Sabiqun. Scholars put their numbers as 130, but the exact time of the declaration of faith cannot be determined. Such a list include those companions also who embraced Islam after Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam began preaching his message openly. All right, so that's where we are going to stop. Covered many names. The names you are going to remember and learn are the 10 promised paradise. And inshallah, we will cover some of the uh, companions. I would like you to uh, listen to Zaid bin al Harissa. Um, very, very uh, uh, beautiful story of Zaid. Um, and he was at very, of course, the beginning um, of the dawah with Rasulullah Sallallahu And he saw all the hardships our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went through. Okay. So beautiful life. These companions um, are very blessed companions because they became. Uh, they were the first uh, Muslims of Islam, like they were the first group, the first batch. But when you study the lives of these uh, companions, it was a very, very tough and difficult life because the as were the ones, the first were the ones who actually suffered a lot on at the hands of the Kuffar of Makkah. And the opposition was huge. They were powerful and they tortured and they uh, humiliated all the Muslims who, who converted to Islam. And that's why they have the biggest status in Islam after Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, of course, uh, because um, they supported Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at the time and they, they were the Muslims and they, they became and they supported Islam. Allah chose them to support them, support the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because um, at the time when it was really, really difficult to be a Muslim, it was it was illegal. You can call your call that it was really hard to call yourself a Muslim in the in the times of Makkah. They 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 were people who were killed just because they said they were Muslims. So it was a very difficult time. They were very very brave people. They were really really strong and in, uh, in their faith. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala mentions them in Quran. And we should always remember that any test that comes to uh, us because of uh, our faith is only to make us close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, um, um, we are Muslims and um, all of us, when we read about these messenger, uh, sorry, these companions, we, and we see their status, like how much Allah praises them. We want, we wish that we, wish that we were uh, in that time, but, you, it's easier said than done because it was a very difficult time. And, um, and uh, Alhamdulillah, Allah has given us 
we are born into Islam, but these people chose to become Muslim because they were born into shirk. Most of them, even if they didn't like Abu Bakr radiallah, she never praised idols. Khadija radiallah, she never, she never prayed to idols. She never worshipped, but they were surrounded by idol worship. They lived in the time of idol worship, um, which, um, which was very common practice. And actually their, relig their parents were on those religions as well. So inshallah, may Allah bless them, may Allah raise their ranks, and may Allah make us follow in the footsteps of the pious, uh, of course, our, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and all the pious uh, predecessors. And also may Allah raise us amongst those people. Uh, Ameen, Subhameen. So inshallah, with this, um, we stop. And your homework, your homework will be to cover, look at, Zaid bin al Harissa, I'll send you the link. I want you to listen to it. And actually, when you have time, the first series, which you, I have sent you already, like you, you listen to Khadija, uh, about Khadija Radiyala and uh, Varaka by Oshia Khomar Suleiman. It is a beautiful series. Um, you should make it a habit to actually, I think there are quite a few of them. You can actually go through them uh, in your own time, sit with your family, it's usually a 40 minutes, one hour lecture, and it covers the earliest converts and the earliest Muslims. Um, and you can listen to the beautiful stories of their uh, lives and it increases us in faith. All right, a lot of similarities you can see in, in, in these people and the hardship they face. Of course, we can never face them to the full extent, but some similarities in the times we live. And so your homework is to cover Zaid, but you have to cover Zaid bin al Harissa. And also uh, memorize the names of the 10 promised paradise. Those we will definitely cover over the time. I want you to cover all of them. Abu Bakr as Siddiq, we all know his name. A lot of people, uh, I mean, even if you don't know much about the Sira, we know the four companions, the great companions. Uh, of course, Abu Bakr as Siddiq um, and Umar bin al Khattab, Usman um, bin Affan and Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. Uh, so inshallah, we will we will do that. I will not be able to take the class next week and the week after. Uh, so in that, uh, I will give you some projects, some work which you can do. So listen to Zaid bin al Harissa uh, and try to uh, memorize the ten promised paradise and try to cover their their history as well. It's it's quite extensive, but inshallah make it a target that you will cover at least these 10 promised paradise, um, you know, by December. So that's that we will do side by side as we are doing the seerah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, okay? So inshallah, and uh, let's go into our uh, grammar, right? So grammar, we covered what? Who can tell me? Just type what we covered. Last week, what we finished. So, yes, Ism Jama, yes, good. So we covered the, uh, the, yes, we covered, yeah, so we have, we have covered, so, so far, Alhamdulillah, we have covered uh, the status, we have covered the gender, we have covered the number. All right, now we are going to, yeah, yes. So Alhamdulillah, you are all clear on this number, jam, uh, ism, jama, and all of that. We have memorized all the lists. So please keep the memorization of lists and everything, um, inshallah. And now we are going to do the last uh, one, um, which is type, all right? Um, type, what does it, type is al-qism, qism, okay? In Arabic, isms can be either common or proper, right? So, what you know in in English as well, we have common nouns. Common isms are isms that are general. They do not specify a particular thing. Example: a book. When you say a book, it can be any book, right? So, a proper ism specifies a certain thing or a person. When you say the book or the book, however you say it, so the book. A common book, proper is the book. Common, common is a city. So you say, I went to a city. It can be any city. You, you must have done in, in English as well, common and proper nouns. So similarly, 
Um, but when you say, I went to Makkah, so we know that you went to Makkah, or you, when you say the, when you put the in front of something, in, in Arabic we put al, when, the, when you see al in front of something, it means it's, a, it's prop. You know, when you say a boy, uh, I saw a boy. We don't know which boy, but we know you saw a boy. But when I say, I saw the boy who was sitting, I saw the boy who was sitting next to. So we, I'm already telling you about a specific boy. And then if I give the name, of course, name is always proper, but anything which is the, uh, the definite article also means it's, a, it's proper. Okay, even in English and even in Arabic. There are seven reasons for an ism in Arabic to be considered proper. Okay, inshallah, we will learn seven of them. So four, four are important. Four are important, but we will do all of them. What four are impo important, I'll tell you. Al, at the beginning, any word in Arabic which has al in the beginning is proper. When we say al-kitab, right? When we say as-siddiq, Whenever we say as-siddiq, it means we are talking about the one, the, the truthful one, Abu Bakr as-siddiq. Okay, so al-amin, who is al-amin? As-sadiq al-amin, Rasulullah sallallahu We know immediately, if we say sadiq, it can be anyone, but we say as-sadiq, it means we are talking about Rasulullah sallallahu al-amin, right? So um, whenever you see al, it means it is um, proper in Quran, wherever you see it. Proper names, of course, names we know are always proper. We know immediately if you say Jibril, you know that we are talking about Angel Jibril. Uh, okay, so uh, Yusuf alayhi salam. So we know we are talking about Yusuf alayhi salam. All right, if I take one of your name, you will know whom, who I'm talking about. So any proper name, pronouns. So pronouns are what? Inshallah, pronoun is actually our next, top, next topic. So when we say he, she, it, and in, in Arabic, hua, hiya, huma, hum, whenever we see this, these are called Arabic pronouns. Inshallah, we will do them. And actually, that's one of your homework as well, that you will learn, memorize the pronouns. Um, so pronouns are proper, always proper. Ism ishara, haza, hazihi. So when we say haza, hazal bayt, haza baytun, haza. When we say haza, it means it's proper. Okay. Allazi, allazina. Wherever you see allazi, allazina, it means it's a mosul, it's proper. Right? If the word after of is proper, the word before of will be proper. What does it mean? If the word, I say, son of Mary. So even if I don't tell you who it is, we know it's Isam alayhi salam, okay? So if the word, son is not proper, okay? Son is not proper. But what is proper? The name Mary. So, so just remember this uh, rule. I will tell you, it will be very useful when we, inshallah, do fragments. When the word after of is proper. So this word is proper it means this is also proper. It makes this word proper. Why? Because immediately we know son of Mary or son of Maryam, um, salam. so Isa ibn Maryam, right? If we say, if we say son of a woman, then, it, then they are both common. So they will be, but if the word after of, remember this word, after of, is proper, Maryam is proper, this will be proper. If it was if it was common, if it was son of a woman, then we don't know whose son, who, but we know it's, so both are common. But if he's a son of Maryam, it means this is proper because Maryam is proper, right? Remember this. So. Al-Munada, the one being called. So whenever you see a ya in front of someone, it means you're calling, like, you know, in Arabic, they, that's how they call ya walad. So if you say walad, a boy, it's, but when we say ya walad, it means you're calling someone specific. So don't worry too much about Al-Munada, um, but uh, just remember these. Uh, but 
anyone who's called, there is a ya in front of it, it means it's proper. So these are the seven reasons for an ism to be proper. Al, proper names, pronouns, ism ishara, ism mausul, and then worry about, like I said, uh, these one, two, three, and then actually if the word after off. Uh, ism ishara, ism mausul will be covered sep separately so you don't have to worry too much about it. But think, remember these, uh, but memorize all of them as well, that these are the seven reasons for an ism to be uh, proper. Okay. So, for example, in the following ayat, the highlighted words are proper. Inna haza. So, indeed, this is. So, uh, haza, it means it's talking about something proper. as ula. Former, the former scriptures. Als. There is an al. And there is an al. as al ula. Former scriptures. Okay. Sohofi. Ibrahima wa Musa. Now, Sohof, a Sohof is proper. Here, the Sohof is common. But why is it highlighted as uh, proper? Look at this. Scriptures of Ibrahim and Musa. So, it is telling us that these are the scriptures of the word after of are proper. Ibrahim and Musa. Sohofi, Ibrahima wa Musa. Right? So, that's why Sohof becomes proper because it is the Sohof, it is the, these are the scriptures of Ibrahim and Musa. So if it had, if it had, if it said, uh, Sohofi, Sohofi um, Ambiya. So it's, um, you know, then we don't know which Ambiya, right? But it's Sohofi Ibrahim wa Musa. So um, pro uh, proper names. So it means Sohof is proper. Okay, Anta wa Anta Hillum Bihazal Balad. Anta. Anta is actually a pronoun. Anta means you in Arabic. And you, so when you talk to someone and say you, it means you're talking to someone specific. Anta. So uh, that's proper. Haz, haza is proper. Al balad is proper because al of al. Okay. Rasulullahi na qatallahi. Why? And the messenger of Allah. Rasulu is common. But the word after of is proper. Allah. Rasulullah. So the word Allah is proper. So that's why this is proper as well. Naqatallah. The camel, the she camel of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So again, naqata is common. If it was an naqata, it will be proper. But why is it proper? Because the word after of is proper. At the moment, you will look at the English translation. How are you going to know it in Arabic? Inshallah, Inshallah, we will do the fragments and we will learn about these things. And you will be able to tell them without looking at the translation very soon. But I want you to just understand the concept right now, okay? So, naqatallahi means the camel, the she camel of Allah. The word Allah after of is proper. So, naqata is proper. Allazi, right? He who gives. Allati. Allazi, I said it's an ism mausul, so you just have to remember. Allazi, Allazina, um, Allati, all of them are uh, proper because they're ism mausul. Uh, Malahu, his wealth. Why is mala proper? Because it's coming with a pronoun. Who is a pronoun? His wealth. Or if you say it in another way, wealth of his. So the world of his, his is proper. That's why wealth is proper. Okay. So I hope that that's clear. So this is your homework now. What you have to do is you have to find, write P for proper and, and C for con, right? So, Al Qarnain. So immediately I'll do one, I'll do two for you with you guys. Al Qarnain means what? Al Al means it's proper. Whether you know the meaning or not, you know it's proper. Right? Ya Adamu. Ya. As soon as you see Ya, it means it's proper. It's a proper name anyway, but you know Ya Adamu. Okay. 
So do it like this, and I'll do one, like for example, this one, Maradhan. It, it, has, it, it doesn't fit into any of the seven uh, uh, categories we have learned, so it is, a, it is common. So when you see something like that, it's common, right? So you just do this, it's an easy homework. And another homework which I, I will give you is this. So this is SNGT, it's status, number, gender, and type. Now you have covered all the four uh, properties. So you will learn, yes, Rahim. Rahim, you have raised your hand. Can you say what you have to say? Ask what you have to ask. All right, if you don't have to ask, please don't raise your hand. Uh, but anyway, so. Do this again, what we have to do. So for example, you look at a word, Nuhan. Now you see, what is it? It's Nas. Why? Because of the two haraka on top. What are they called? Pathatan. And or Dozabar. So whatever you call it, Nuhan. It's a Nas. All right? It's singular. It's masculine. And it's proper because it's the name of a person. So this is how you're going to look at a word and you are going to do it. Allahi, what is this? Jar, why? Because of the kasra or the zair. And then it's singular, it's masculine and it's proper. Remember how we determine every word in Arabic by default is masculine unless we know the reasons I, we learned in our last class. Every word by default is common unless they fit the seven categories we have learned today. So you have to learn, you have to remember that when you put, look at a word, put it in that. So Sajidina, all right, what is it? Is it a Nas? Is it, and if it, if it, it looks like both Nas Penjar, then you will write Nas Penjar as well, okay? Now N uh, slash J and then number, gender and type. All right, I want you to do this. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to do it. If you do make a mistake, that's fine. Hopefully you learn from your mistakes because inshallah we will be doing pronouns after when I come back and um, um, and then once uh, we start pronouns we finish pronouns uh, we will be doing fragments and fragments are basically small phrases in Arabic and we will be learning about them all right so um, and inshallah then as there is a lot of memorization so what I want you to do is um, do these exercises you also have to learn the pronoun chart. So this is the pronoun chart. I'll send it. Ua humahum, hiya humahunna, anta antuma antum, anti antuma antunna, ana nahnu. Uh, and these are the nasp and jar versions of it because these are all rough on top. All right. So the third person pronoun, second person pronoun, and first person pronoun. So memorize this. Don't worry about anything else because we will cover pronouns in our next class. But I want you. So you will have two weeks, basically, um, you can say a, of a break, but I will give you some homework, which will, um, which I want you to uh, cover uh, while, while we don't have the classes. If you have any questions, you can ask in the group. Inshallah, we will answer your question. All right. Uh, but at the moment, if you have any questions, you can ask as well. Um, so this is what we have covered today, ism, type, common, proper, right? Um, al, words with al, proper names. The one being called, ya, yeah, pronouns, he, she, you, I, we, if we, like you will do it in Arabic as well. Pointer words, this, that, these, so haza, hazi, con connector words such as the one who, allazi, uh, well, it says modaf, if modaf ilay is proper, proper, that's what we learned. The word after of is mudaf ilay. So if it's proper, the mudaf is proper. You don't have to learn that uh, at the moment. I don't want you to get confused. We will do mudaf and mudaf ilay. But I told you the word after of, if it's proper, then the word before of will become proper. Okay. So just do, just um, remember that um, any questions about homework, about today's class, about anything, please ask.
no questions if everything is clear okay no problem uh, if everything is clear just put a why just one why please don't do what you're doing and listen uh, and be respectful in your class so please just put a why if you've understood everything okay, alhamdulillah um, so homework is clear so what's the homework inshallah you will do these exercises you the exercises that are given you will cover zaid bin al harisa uh, i'll send you the link inshallah and uh, you will memorize the pronoun chart right cool um let's um finish our class then if you don't have any questions um everyone's written why yes okay alhamdulillah so mashallah uh, you should be very proud of yourself for the fact that we have covered this much alhamdulillah it's grammar and you're learning the arabic as well and inshallah once we start fragments and we start jumla ismiya and jumla failiya um inshallah we will um we'll be able to understand much uh, much uh, not all of course we, it's very it's a big thing to do that but inshallah we'll be able to understand much more and sometimes we'll be able to understand a lot of things without looking at the translation so that's the goal and also um you know we'll be actually going more into quran once we go into uh, the jumla uh, ismiya and failiya as well so inshallah just keep your memorization up to date um increase your vocabulary whatever we have learned so far please keep memorizing and uh, reviewing it um and that's the only reason we can um retain it because of course most of us are not um uh, arabic speakers uh, so we need to keep um on top of that and may allah bless you for all your effort so let's uh, finish the class now subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik um oh allah accept our efforts bless our learning and make us the people of quran may allah um accept it all from us and may allah bless your rest of the week and inshallah i'll see you in two weeks uh if i do happen to be able to take the class i i definitely can't take it next week but i know if the week after i can i will uh, message in the group but for now um it seems like i won't be able to take um the class on 11th and 18th so i will probably see you on 25th of october inshallah uh if not um on 18th okay so take care look after yourself do your homework and uh, listen to the serial lectures assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh